Hi everybody, it's Malachi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Let's get straight into today's video. It is going to be a long one, but I'm super, super excited for today's message. Before we get started, make sure that you guys check out in the description box down below underneath the title of this message. You can contact me, get merch down there, get my book, all the things down in the description box down below. Make sure to comment what you want to see next in the next video and let's get into today's video. Okay, so this is going to be a long video, but it's super, super important and every Gen Z needs to watch this. Like it is so, so important. We have tons of scripture in today's word, so I'm gonna be flipping my Bible a whole lot, but let's get into it. Okay, so today's title you guys have already seen is called Simply War. What does war mean? Right now we are in a spiritual war and this is a video for urgency for believers, especially for Gen Z like myself that are Christians. And I just wanted to talk about the spiritual war that we are in right now. So you guys can look at the news. You guys can look at all of the crazy things that are happening right now. You know, I won't even go and list a bunch of things, but um, you just, you know, from the news, you know, there's so much that's going on right now. And I truly believe that we are in an all out spiritual war like we have never seen before. It is absolutely insane all the things that are going on but i do want to talk about this and we're going to start off reading in revelations verses two i know i preached this mess i preached this exact message a couple weeks ago whenever i said revelations everybody was like <gasps> so but don't be worried um i'm excited so let's hop into revelations chapter two here's what it says revelation chapter two verses one through five it says to the angel of the church in ephesus here's what they write these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know your deeds and your hard work and your perseverance, and I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, but you have not and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love that you first had. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have to know that this is in your favor. Okay, so it goes on. Basically what is happening here is in this um, certain chapter in Revelations, um, this is addressing seven churches. I believe it's seven. Yes. Um, so that Jesus is addressing these churches and he's giving them basically these letters of what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. And he's addressing them. And so John actually has this encounter with the Lord and writes down all of these things that the Lord is speaking about this. So I think that the church of Ephesus is a lot of the churches that we see today. And I think that this is a wake up call for believers, like whenever I read this, I start to think about my own life, you know, in those ways where he's saying, you know, you, where Jesus was saying that, you know, I see your, I see your deeds that you do for my kingdom. I see your hard work. I see that you've persevered whenever things got hard. I see that, you know, you've been walking the narrow road. I see that you've been doing all these things. And he's saying, you know, you're doing good, but here's the thing I hold against you. You forsaking you first, you're, you forsaking your first love, meaning that you've fallen away from who you were truly first in love with. And I think about, you know, whenever I first started, you know, this relationship with God, and I, I've always been in a relationship with the Lord, but whenever like the beginning of kind of last year in the summer, whenever I was like completely on fire for the Lord, I think of where my life was then and where my life was now and how this just I want to say like honeymoon phase type deal whenever you're first like in love with Jesus and you just desire to hang out with him all the time. You desire to read the word and like understand that things like that. And so that's kind of what he's saying is he's saying consider whenever you were first in love and consider how far you've fallen from that point. You know, maybe you've grown complacent in some areas. And so that's what he's saying. And so I think that the Lord really wanted me to read this to you guys because I wanted to almost urge you as that as well. And so whenever I'm talking about, you know, spiritual war, you know, the things that are going on in this world that we live in today. Yes, there is a wild, crazy, raging war spiritually that is going on. And I mean, it talks about that in Ephesians and Galatians, you know, how we don't fight with flesh and blood. And it may look like there's crazy things going on naturally, but really it's a supernatural spiritual battle. I don't know if you guys understand that what I'm saying at all, but if you do, you get it. But um, yes, there is that battle going on, but I truly believe that there's a spiritual battle going on inside of every believer. And I, that's what I want to talk about today. So the enemy will try to conquer you on the inside so you can't conquer anything on the outside. And so this spiritual battle I want to talk about today is one that is inside yourself. 
Um, the enemy is at a war for your attention and for your affection. What does that mean? Your attention. He wants you to look at anything but God. He is warring for your attention so that your attention will be misplaced. Your attention will be in the world. Your attention will be in things of sin that are not of God. What is the second thing? War for your affection, meaning that what does your heart desire? You know, in Matthew, it talks about whatever my heart values, it is my treasure. The enemy tries to change what I value, what I put as my treasure so that my affections will be for something else that is not of God. That's what the enemy's warring over. And you have to conquer that on the inside of you or else if you don't conquer that, you can never conquer anything on the outside. Oh, that was a lot of words. Okay, so I also want to read to you guys in Ephesians and no, Ephesians and Galatians. Wow, sorry. I'm saying I have a lot of scripture, like a lot. And I've really been studying this out and I actually did this message a little bit a while ago. But I really think the Lord wanted me to redo it for you guys. So we're going to start reading in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. And it's called Life by the Spirit. So, so important to this message today. Here's what it says. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. I just want to take a moment to just show you all how highlighted this is because I love Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, and Philippians. Super powerful. Anyways, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by one another. So I say to you this, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit living inside of you and the spirit what is contrary to your flesh. They're in conflict with each other and they... So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And then it talks about the acts of flesh are obvious. And here's what the acts of flesh are. And it lists them out. And it says, now the fruit of the spirit is this. Okay, so what is going on here? You are in a war inside of yourself. Meaning that you have flesh. You have real flesh. You have real spirit. And you get to decide which one of those will runs your life. Meaning that if I feed into my flesh, meaning that I give myself whatever my flesh desires, then my flesh will be stronger than my spirit. And that means that I'd be living carnal. That means I'd be living a life to the spirit, whatever the spirit desires. But if you're, if you're led by the spirit, meaning that you're led by God inside of you, you're letting the Holy Spirit run and rule and reign in your life, meaning that I feed the spirit and starve the flesh, which is what we should ultimately be longing to do. But I love that it's saying that the flesh and the spirit are completely opposite and they're contrary to one another. And you get the decision who wins and who rules and who reigns in your life because you cannot let flesh rule and you cannot let the spirit rule at the, at the same time. So... We have to realize that we are not a perfect Christian, meaning that we do struggle and that just because you are saved does not mean that you are safe. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But we have to realize that just because I'm saved does not mean that I'm safe from temptation. I'm not safe from the flesh taking over, meaning that every single day I have to decide to feed the spirit and starve the flesh. Every single day. You're not exempt just because you are a Christian. You have There's a spiritual battle going on every single day and you have to decide every single day to feed the spirit. I don't, know if that's, I don't know if this is making sense. But anyways, that means that you have to pray every single day, God, more of you, less of me, more of you, less of me. Because the more flesh I give, the more power I give to my flesh, the more power the flesh has over me. But if I'm saying more yes to God and less to my flesh, then the Lord is ruling over my life. The Lord is reigning in my life. And so Christ makes us free. He said that in the first scripture, uh, number 13, he says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Meaning that the Lord, once we come into relationship with him, he is setting us free. But if we live by, if we live to gratify, if we live according to the flesh, meaning that we're not free. If we live according to the flesh, then the bondage of of the enemy comes over us and that means that we're not free we don't get to run free anymore but because you live by the spirit then you are set free completely so christ has made us free but what we do with that freedom matters meaning that yes i, I i'm washed by the blood i'm clean the lamb uh, the blood of the lamb jesus christ dying on the cross he set me free from the bondage of my past but what i do with that freedom matters because if i if i take that freedom and i go right back to living by the flesh then I'm becoming dirty all over again and I, I'm disregarding what the blood of the lamb did for me. That's one thing that I hate to see in the Christian world is that whenever people get set free, they think that, oh, God's going to forgive me so I can just keep on sinning. I can keep on doing whatever I want. We have to realize that whenever God sets us free, he does that to let us remain free, to walk free, to walk in relationship with him. He doesn't set us free just so we can go right back to the thing that 
put us in bondage. Okay, so the first thing I'll talk about is this. Whenever you are saved, you are not automatically safe. I said this a second ago in the video, but I'm gonna go into more detail about it now. You will have temptations and you will have spiritual battles. That's a given. That's not something that you're exempt from just because you are a Christian, just because you are saved. So what does that, what does that mean? Um, just, I think that there's this, um, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it, but um, there's this idea that whenever you get saved, that means you're just automatically safe. Like you're good. You're exempt from temptation. You're exempt from um, the enemy trying to attack you. And that's just not true. Like, it's just really not because every single day there are temptations and you get to decide, are you going to give into those temptations or are you going to keep on running after God? Because it would be, sorry, let me fix the camera. It would be foolish and wrong of me to say that you're exempt from those things. Like it, it's going to happen, but you have to live so submitted to the Lord that temptations do not distract you. Okay. So I think about the Bible, Adam and Eve, they were in Eden, meaning that they were the first people, and they were in this place called Eden with the Lord, and they physically walked with God every single day. That's how close they were to him. Like, they were in such close relationship with the Lord, and then a snake came into Eden and began to tempt Eve while they were in Eden. Like, while they were in Eden, you guys know the story, but if you don't, I want to quickly recap it. Basically, you know, they were living, and the Lord said, they were living in a relationship with the Lord, like super close. They walked with God, just incredible, incredible relationship. And they were living in this perfect place called Eden. And the Lord said, you can eat any fruit except for this one. Basically the snake came, which is the enemy in snake form. He came and he tempted Eden with what she found desirable in her mind, which it says on scripture. And it goes back to what I was saying. The enemy finds what you're affectionate about. And then he tempts you with what you're affectionate about. And then if you trip and you fall into that temptation, then it makes you feel guilty about it. That's, that's like the tricks of the enemy. He tries to get you to do something just to turn around and make you feel guilty for doing it. Wake up, guys. His tactics are pretty plain and simple. You have to realize it and then submit to the Lord instead. Okay, so back to the story. Adam and Eve, they were in Eden. And then they were tempted while they were in Eden. Like they were in a relationship with God. They were the first. They were in this perfect world with the Lord. But Eve, Eve still got tempted and Eve, and Eve fell. Like we have to realize that. That we have to realize the enemy's tactics, you know? And so, we have to recognize the enemy's tactics. I literally wrote that down on my notes. That was the next thing I was going to say. Okay, we have to realize that whenever the enemy... Everything I've already written down, I've already said. Wow. Okay, so I don't have to be scared of the enemy because I know he's fighting for me instead. And that's living submitted to the Lord. That's, yes, the enemy may attack me, but I know that whenever I put my hands down and say yes to the Lord, then he's going to come in and fight my battles for me. When God stands up, every other power has to sit down. But if I try to fight things naturally that was actually supernatural, I can't win because I'm fighting, living, to, um, living by thinking that I can win. But I can't win. He can win, though. He's never lost a battle, so why would I even? And try to step in and battle this out myself you have to realize that the thing is we struggle with temptation because we're not locking eyes with god that right there is so important because a lot of people struggle in and out of sin they struggle with temptations they struggle giving into temptations of living free because they're not locking eyes with god simply how you fight temptation is speaking in tongues praying in the spirit that's how you can overcome temptation or getting in the word spending time with the lord you know um there's on like TikTok, I don't have TikTok, but Instagram Reels or TikTok, whichever you watch, there's like this, um, these videos where they're talking about like the enemy tries to attack you at night with different uh, temptations, things like that. And I love the videos whenever they like are uh, showing that, you know, whenever the enemy attacks at night, what do you do? You immediately get in the word and the spirit, that spirit will leave. And that's so true. Like, how do you combat temptation? How do you combat the enemy coming at you? And it's simply him. Like, it's simply God. Like, if you just run after him, and if you just lock eyes with him, it makes everything so much easier. I think a lot of people, the Lord revealed this to me, is whenever the enemy attacks you, you begin to look at the enemy and say, no. But it would be so much easier if you would just look at God and say yes to him. And then he's fighting what's behind you, and you don't even see it. I don't know if that's making sense. If you're looking at him... He fights what's behind you with enemies. But like if I'm looking at the situation, if I'm looking at what the enemy's tempting me with, it's a lot harder for me to fight it because I'm not looking at God. I'm looking at what the enemy's trying to tempt, tempt me with. Okay, so um, Christianity isn't hard, but sin in your life makes it hard. And that's one of the things that I feel like a lot of the church kind of like 
has to realize is whenever, or Gen Z, whenever you're new to Christianity, Christianity is not hard, but you letting sin into your relationship with God can make it hard. Because then you think, oh, I'm guilty all over again. Now I have to go back and ask for forgiveness. But it, it's not an embarrassing thing. But if you would just completely submit to the Lord, then you would have to keep on coming back and repenting. You know, submitting to him means everything is unto you. And anything that draws me away from him, away, away from you, God, I want to get rid of. So it could be like an app on your phone. You know, if something is tempting you, then get rid of it. Okay, so this is a war for your atten for our attention and your affection. I already talked about that. People wonder why they can't hear from God, but maybe you've been hearing from TikTok so much that it's hard for you to hear the truth. Okay, yes, that's so true. A lot of times that um, it's harder for us to hear from God is because we're allowing the enemy to speak too much. Um, one thing that I always tell teenagers is whenever I'm talking to them, I'm saying, it's harder for you to hear from God whenever you are hearing from the world so much. If you get less of the world and more of God, it's a lot easier to hear it, receive from him and welcome in his presence. But if you are not listening to God, if you're living carnal, meaning that you're living more by the flesh, if you are living more by that and you're not listening to God, you give the enemy room to speak because you're not listening to God. You know, you have to decide whose voice you're going to let speak into your life. Okay, so... Galatians. We're going to go back to Galatians. So Galatians chapter 5. Sorry, I know I'm talking a whole lot. I hope you guys are picking this up. You guys can rewatch, roll it back. But I love this word and it's so powerful. Okay. Um, Matthew, not Matthew. Wow. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. I'm going to read it to you guys. Here's what it says. You were running such a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through a whole batch of dough. I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever they may be, will have to pay the penalty. Okay. What is happening here is wolf in cheap's clothing. There are people that will come into your life simply to distract you. And I truly believe that, like, this is not to be like, oh, that person is straight from the pits of hell. What I'm saying is that there are people that come in and without realizing they're trying to distract you from running your race with God. And they may have allowed the enemy to come in and work through them in that way. And they may not even realize it, but you have to realize that. That's why you have to discern it, meaning that you have to let the Holy Spirit come into you so that whatever a situation is going on, you let the Holy Spirit teach you, oh, that's not from me. That's not from God. And that's what discernment is, is it opens up your spiritual eyes for things you may not see naturally. Like, there can be people that come into your life, either like relationship or friendship or mentor even, either one of those three things, and you have to have discernment to know, okay, this is a godsend. Yes, I, I want to receive this relationship, this friendship, this mentorship, because I know it's from God, and God's using this to spiritually edify me, to spiritually grow me. But you also have discernment for whenever the wrong people come into your life, and you're like, hey, now, God didn't send you, and honestly, this is probably the enemy. Bye. Okay, so, wow, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, Wolf and Chief's Clothing. Okay, you have to realize that reading your Bible is so much more important than reading, than watching Christian TikToks. Okay, this is something that I want to debunk right now. Just because you follow a million like Instagram accounts that are Christian and just because you follow a bunch of Christian TikTokers does not mean that you know God. You have to know him for yourself because there are a lot of people that are deceived and they post things that are not spiritually correct. And you have to know God for yourself. Like you cannot base your relationship with God off of someone else's relationship with the Lord. Like even like you can't base your your pastor's relationship, your youth pastor's relationship with God off of yours. Like your, your Bible reading cannot just be what the pastor preached about on Sunday and that's all that you read is whenever the pastor says, oh, whatever Bibles, let's read from this. That can't be your Bible reading for the whole week. You have to get to know him yourself. I love pastors and I love youth pastors, but they cannot be your spiritual relationship with the Lord. Yes, they teach you. Yes, they guide you, but you have to know him for yourself. Let me get back over my notes, see where I'm at. Okay, snake in Eden, harmless and innocent. Yes, okay, yeah, a snake came into Eden they looked harmless. They looked, it looked harmful. It looked innocent. It looked like, you know, like just another creature. You have to realize that wolf in sheep's clothing, meaning that they're, in the Bible it talks about that these wolves are ravenous, but they can sometimes come in sheep's clothing to, um, to distract you, to catch you off guard and to pull you away from God. You have to have discernment to realize that. Okay. So be careful you let speak into your life. To the back page we go okay so number three i guess i already talked about number two yeah so number three yeah don't go back or take a step back this is so important in your spiritual walk 
because this is something that I seriously have such a heart for because I've seen the enemy do this a million times where someone is so on fire for God, but they take a step back because something happens or something, someone fails you. I just want to say if someone spiritually, like if you're on fire for God and you have another friend that's on fire for God and if they take a step back that does not mean you take a step back too you have to be a spiritual leader and lead them sometimes or detach from them so don't take a step back at all because the enemy's tactic is to make you miss your past I have seen so many people that were so on fire for God and then they begin to look at their past and say oh look how much fun that was Oh, sometimes I just miss those old relationships. Sometimes I just miss those old friendships. That is straight from the enemy. Do not miss that. Keep going forward. I mean, even even the enemy has tried to do this to me. You know, like, I'll see, like, a year ago, like, on my little photo or photo album, it'll be like, a year ago today, you were doing this. Or two years ago today, you were doing this. Do not take a step back for the sake of old memories. Because I promise you, if you, you may have had a couple of high moments where you feel amazing. But remember all the nights that you cried yourself to sleep because you did not know the Lord? Think about that. Okay, so um, Ephesians, we're going to go to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 5. Galatians and Ephesians will straight up rock your world. If you're looking for something to read in your Bible, go Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. So powerful, life-changing. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5. Wow. Look how much there is. Like, I just love it so much. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5. Here's what it says in verses 8 through 15. For once you were in darkness, but now you were in the light of the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitfulness deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it says, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as the unwise, but as wise this is so powerful because your action and your life should look completely different before you encounter god meaning that that first verse for once you were in darkness but now you're in the light of the lord in the passion translation it says once you were bound in the darkness but now the lord has wholeheartedly set you free so therefore stubbornly refuse to go back to your past Wow, I just quoted that from scripture, from memory, I meant. Um, that's what the Passion Version of that says. And it's so powerful because once God set you free, why would you ever for a second think about even going back to the bondage of your past? You have to realize that, that once he set you free, it says in the Passion, stubbornly refuse to go back. Because think about how the freedom felt whenever you got free from the things that used to bind you, things that used to be leave you bound, and now you're completely and hopefully set free, so why would you even go back? Okay, so... Please go back. I literally am begging you, do not go back to the bondage of your past because there's so many people behind you that are waiting on your yes, that your yes to God is leading them. And if you fall, they may fall. Because the thing is, your obedience to God can empower people behind you. Meaning that whenever I said yes to God, there are so many other people that are watching me live my life. And me saying yes has empowered them to say yes. But if I say no, my no can trip other people to fall. In the same way, I don't know who you are or where you live, but because you said yes to the Lord, people behind you are saying yes that you may not even see, you may not even know about because of your obedience to the Lord. But if you fall, they may fall too. Or if you fall, there are people that may not even get a chance to say yes. Realize that. Okay, so how do I defeat temptation and destroy the enemy and stay on fire for the Lord? That's kind of the question I feel like is lingering in the air after I just talked about this spiritual war inside of yourself. So if you are wondering at all, how do I defeat temptation? How do I destroy the enemy? And how do I stay on fire for the Lord? The thing is, here's what you do. Fight the flesh by feeding the spirit. That, that, that's it. Like actually, how do I do, how do I defeat temptation, Mally? How do I stay on fire for the Lord? How do I destroy the enemy whenever he's trying to attack me? Fight the flesh. Fight the spiritual facts. Fat. Whoa. Fight the spiritual attacks by feeding the spirit, by getting in the word. And it is that simple. If you are struggling with sin, open the word of God. If you are having bad thoughts, pray because God cares. Like genuinely pray. Prayer is like a secret weapon it's like a lost art that so many people need to get back to because prayer is the foundation of everything everything in my life is because of prayer 
Everything in my parents' house is because of prayer. Everything I'm surrounded in, the, uh, the world that I'm living in right now, is because it was built on prayer. And you have to have that. Like, that's something, it's not like a maybe. It's like you have to have it. And if you're having bad thoughts, literally just go talk to God. And it doesn't have to be this perfect prayer. It's just genuinely from your heart. If you are having problems cussing, go worship. Go listen to Mercy Culture Worship. Um, they're super powerful. Go listen to Sean Foy. Go listen to Eddie James. Go listen to Lyndall Cooley. Go listen to uh, Rick Pino, Jason Upton. That's who I like to listen to. Um, Maverick City. You know, go listen to worship so that out of your mouth you are declaring worship songs because worship is a living prayer. And so if you're declaring prayer out of your mouth through worship, you will be strengthening your spirit and decreasing your flesh. Fight the temptation with him every single time. If you're having temptations, fight it by saying yes to him and no to yourself. More of God, less of you. Okay. Please, and the last thing I want to leave you guys with this because we're already at 25 minutes. Please understand the magnitude and the power behind your yes to the plan of God's kingdom. Your yes means so, so much for your life and for so many others. Constantly say yes and defeat the enemy. I hope this video encouraged you guys. If you have any questions, remember, you can... um. My DMs are down there, and you can comment down below. I hope that you guys are doing okay. I love you all so much. If you need any prayer, you know how to um, get in contact down here. And comment down below what video you want to see next. Thank you guys so much. Bye.